Assalamu alaikum and a very good day to everyone. Today, we are going to learn about periodic table. The allocated time for this chapter is 2 hours. This chapter has two main subtopics, 3.1, classification of elements, and 3.2, periodicity. So, for the first hour of the chapter, we are going to learn about the classification of elements and the variation of atomic and ionic size of elements across a period or down a group. Classification of Elements There are five learning outcomes for the first hour of this lecture. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to Describe period, group and block To deduce the position of elements in the periodic table from its electronic configuration To describe the variation in atomic radii across a period Across the first row of transition elements, down a group. To compare the atomic radius of an element and its corresponding ionic radius. And last but not least, to define the term isoelectronic. As you have learned before during your school times, the modern periodic table was introduced by Mitri Mendelis in 1869. Mendeley found that the elements repeat the similar properties every seven elements. Therefore, the table is called periodic table. The modern periodic table is constructed based on the proton numbers of elements. The periodic table can be classified into three main categories which are metals, metalloids, and nonmetals. Their positions are shown in this figure, where the yellow region here indicates the metal elements except for hydrogen, where the green region here indicates the non-metal including the hydrogen, and last, the purple region as the metalloid elements. Most of the elements are metals. All the elements on the left side and in the middle of the periodic table except for hydrogen are metallic elements or metal. Metallic elements or metal are shiny and they are the good conductors. Besides metal, we also have non-metal elements. Non-metal elements are found on the upper right of the periodic table and hydrogen on the upper left of the periodic table. As we go across the period towards the right, the elements gradually lose their metallic character and gain non-metallic features. The non-metallic elements are not shiny and they are non-conductors. The dividing line between the metals and the non-metals elements, which look like a staircase here, are often called as metalloid. They have properties that fall between metal and non-metals. Metalloids have the semiconductor properties. Let's do this exercise together. Exercise 1. Classify whether these elements are metal, metalloid or non-metal. To do this question, you have to recall what we have studied just now. Based on the location of X, S, T and U, which X is obviously the hydrogen, and S, T and U are located on the right of the periodic table, so X, S, T and U are non-metals while W, V, Y, and R 
are located in the left side and in the middle of the periodic table, so they are metals. Z is located in the dividing line here that separating the metals from the non-metal elements. Hence, Z is metalloid. Before we go into further details, let's familiarize ourselves with the term period, block, and group. The vertical column in the periodic table are known as group, while the horizontal rows of elements which are arranged in the order of the increasing proton numbers are called period. And last but not least, the block of elements are classified based on its electronic configuration. There are seven horizontal rows in a periodic table and these rows are called periods. Each period containing a set of elements that are arranged in the order of increasing proton number. And for your information, each period represents the number of energy levels present in an atom of the element. This figure shows a clearer view of period in the periodic table. If I look at period 1, I have two elements which are hydrogen and helium. And in the second period, we have eight elements with lithium on the left and neon on the most right. I can continue numbering the period where this is period 3, period 4, period 5, period 6, and period 7. So the total periods in the periodic table are 7 periods. As I mentioned earlier, period represents the energy level of an atom, which automatically means that the elements in the same period possess the identical number of quantum levels or having the same number of shells. For example, sodium and chlorine atom has the same number of shell, which is 3. Therefore, both of sodium and chlorine are located in period 3. You can also conclude that the period can be determined by the highest value of the principal quantum number n in the electronic configuration. Time for another exercise. Exercise 2. Determine period of element below from its electronic configuration. Remember just now, we conclude that the period of elements are indicated by the highest end value in the electronic configuration. So, let's look at the electronic configuration of A. The electronic configuration of A is 1s2. 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, where the highest n value in this electronic configuration is 4. Hence, the period of A is period 4. The same rules applies to element B. The electronic configuration of B is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. And the highest end value here is 2. Therefore, B is in period 2. For C, you can see here that the highest end value in this electronic configuration is 4. Therefore, C is in period 4. Next, the electronic configuration of D is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. The highest end value here is 3. So D is in period 3. For E, the highest end value in the electronic configuration is 4. Same as F, the highest electronic configuration of F is also 4. Therefore, both E and F are in period 4.